Welcome to our World and News program. Today we have a mix of shocking, intriguing, and uplifting stories from around the globe. First up, a Chinese crime ring has been accused of stealing over 4,000 dead bodies to use their bones for dental grafts, sparking widespread public outrage. The police in Taiyuan are investigating these grave allegations that have put the state-run funeral industry under intense scrutiny. Next, South Korea faces a major intelligence setback as a leak exposes undercover agents, forcing them to abandon their operations and return home. The breach, traced back to a civilian official within the Korea Defense Intelligence Command, has left the country's spy networks in disarray and could take years to rebuild. Lastly, on a brighter note, Indonesia celebrates a historic moment at the Paris Olympics, winning its first gold medals outside of badminton. Vedric Leonardo clinched gold in speed climbing, and Rizky Giniancia triumphed in the men's 73 kg weightlifting competition, marking a proud achievement for the nation. Please stay tuned for the detailed stories and more exciting updates. South China Morning Post A Chinese crime ring has been accused of stealing over 4,000 corpses from crematoriums and medical laboratories to use their bones for dental grafts, sparking public outrage. Yi Xinghua, president of Beijing Brave Lawyer, revealed on social media that police in Taiyuan, Shangxi province, are investigating the use of these bones to produce allogeneic bone grafts, typically made from bones removed during surgery. A company named Shangxi Aorue Biomaterials allegedly bought these bodies and earned 380 million yuan by selling the bones for dental grafts. Police seized 18 tons of bones and over 34,000 graft products. A suspect, Su, confessed to stealing the bodies from various provinces, with crematorium staff dismembering them for easier transport. The investigation also involves allegations against Qingdao University Hospital's liver center, further complicating the case. South China Morning Post South Korea's spy networks face a critical blow after a leak exposed the identities of undercover agents to a suspected North Korean operative. The breach, discovered by South Korean hackers, forced many agents to return home, dismantling intelligence networks built over years. The leak was traced back to a civilian official within the Korea Defense Intelligence Command, KDIC, who was arrested on charges of espionage. This incident signifies a major collapse in South Korea's human intelligence capabilities, with experts warning it could take years to rebuild. Defense Minister Shin Won-sik downplayed the breach, but internal conflicts within Dick's leadership have further complicated the situation. Past scandals, including the sale of agent details to China and Japan, highlight recurring vulnerabilities in South Korea's intelligence apparatus. The South China Morning Post China's trade with Southeast Asia is encountering increasing barriers amid fears of overcapacity and trade imbalances. Vietnam and India have launched anti-dumping investigations into Chinese steel imports, reflecting broader regional concerns. From January to July, 96 trade barrier investigations targeted China, surpassing last year's total. ASEAN countries are particularly wary of their growing trade deficits with China, which widened from $44.8 billion in 2013 to $137.3 billion in 2022. Malaysia and Indonesia have announced measures to protect their industries from cheap Chinese imports. Despite Beijing's efforts to strengthen trade relations through agreements like the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, analysts like Deborah Elms and Shea Wester predict that trade barriers will continue to rise, driven by economic and geopolitical considerations. South China Morning Post, in August 2024, under the water monkey's influence, the Chinese zodiac signals a month of transformation and renewal. The water monkey, symbolizing commerce, creativity, and activity, urges individuals to reset boundaries and set plans in motion for the year's second half. Those born under the monkey sign are known for their vitality, leadership, and innovative spirit. This month, rats should focus on building a rainy day fund, while oxen are advised to take a holiday to reassess their current situation. Tigers, facing an astrological clash, should maintain a low profile to avoid setbacks. Rabbits are encouraged to take calculated risks, and dragons should trust their gut feelings. Snakes will experience their luckiest month, with potential career advancements, while horses need to remain calm and composed. Sheep should avoid lending money, monkeys need to stay away from aggravation, and roosters should avoid unnecessary expenditures. Dogs will benefit from spending time with animals and nature, while pigs are advised to maintain a low profile to avoid attracting envy. South China Morning Post, Hong Kong stocks experienced a notable rise, marking a winning week fueled by positive reports on Chinese inflation data and U.S. job statistics. The Hang Seng Index climbed 2%, with the tech index surging 3.1%, 
and the Shanghai Composite Index adding 0.4%. SMIC, China's largest chip maker, saw a 7.2% rally after surpassing second-quarter earnings expectations. Other tech giants like Alibaba, Baidu, and Tencent also posted gains. Despite a 22-month decline in producer prices, consumer prices in mainland China rose by 0.5% in July, prompting predictions of further monetary policy easing. In the U.S., fewer jobless claims than expected alleviated recession fears, suggesting the Federal Reserve might be on track with interest rate adjustments. Analysts like Goldman Sachs and BCA Research suggest that the worst of the global market slump may be over, with Chinese stocks offering a safe harbor appeal. Additionally, Japanese, South Korean, and Australian markets showed positive trends, contributing to the overall optimistic outlook. South China Morning Post, at the Paris Olympics, Hong Kong's Lo Weifeng made his debut in Taekwondo, finishing 7th in the under, 68 kg category. Despite a promising start, Lo was eliminated in the repechage round by China's Liang Yushui, who later secured a bronze medal. Lo, the first Hong Konger to qualify for the Olympics in Taekwondo since 2000, acknowledged the gap in experience, speed, and strength between him and elite athletes. After a convincing win in the qualification round, Lo faced reigning Olympic champion Ulugbek Rashatov, which provided him an invaluable learning experience. Although he didn't win a medal, Lo remains determined to improve and narrow the gap with the best. His coach, Kelvin Wong Kawing, praised Lo for executing their strategies well and expressed optimism about the future, suggesting that with upgraded funding, Hong Kong could aim higher in international competitions. Despite the challenges, Lo is committed to working hard and aspires to win medals in future events. Associated Press, President Nicolas Maduro has imposed a 10-day suspension on the social network X in Venezuela, accusing its owner, Elon Musk, of promoting hatred following the country's disputed presidential election. Maduro announced this decision after a pro-government march, alleging that Musk violated the platform's own rules and incited political unrest. By Thursday night, posts on X had ceased loading on both private and state-owned telephone services. Maduro claims the opposition used X to create anxiety and threaten his supporters. This move follows a heated exchange between Maduro and Musk, with the latter accusing Maduro of electoral fraud. The opposition maintains that their candidate, Edmundo Gonzalez, was the true winner, while Maduro's government has yet to produce voting tallies. Japan Times, petrochemical producers in Europe and Asia are grappling with a global glut and high energy costs, pushing them into survival mode. Years of capacity buildup in China and the energy crisis in Europe have depressed margins for two consecutive years, leading to asset sales, plant closures, and retrofitting facilities to use cheaper raw materials like ethane instead of naphtha. This sector's struggles are concerning for the global oil industry, which has been relying on petrochemicals to sustain profits as demand for transportation fuel is expected to decline with the energy transition. Industry executives and analysts note that these challenges are forcing firms to consolidate to stay afloat. Al Jazeera, Indonesia celebrated a historic moment at the Paris Olympics as speed climber Vedrick Leonardo secured the country's first Olympic gold outside of badminton. Vedrick scaled a 15-meter wall in a record 4.75 seconds, narrowly beating his Chinese rival. His victory was followed by another gold from 21-year-old Rizky Giniancia in the men's 73 kg weightlifting competition, setting an Olympic record with a clean and jerk of 199 kg. The double triumph marked a significant achievement for Indonesia, which has become a powerhouse in speed climbing. President Joko Widodo and the nation celebrated these victories, highlighting the emotional and proud moments for the athletes and their supporters. <music> Japan Times, Louis, a 36-year-old ride-hailing driver from Wuhan, is feeling the pressure as the rise of driverless taxis threatens his livelihood. Once a construction worker, Lou turned to part-time driving due to a slowdown in construction caused by an oversupply of unsold apartments. Now, standing beside his vehicle, he watches with growing concern as his neighbors opt for the convenience of robot access. This technological shift represents a looming crisis for the 7 million ride-hailing drivers across China, who now face the daunting prospect of being replaced by autonomous vehicles. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 do brief, 
it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6Do Brief via email. Got a question in your mind We'll find the answer, we'll be kind Encyclopedia on everything Laugh and learn with the zing, zing, zing From ants to outer space We've got the facts in one great place for kids and grown-ups too We've got the A to Z for you Kids and grown-ups too